WWE Royal Rumble around the corner. Gonna be in St. Pete, not too far where you guys are living. How are we feeling prior to the show? I mean, I'm excited for for one. Like, it's so nice to to have Royal Rumble, especially in January, in a, a warm climate, which is great. Um, and very rare. And very rare. It's so nice. <laughs> that way we don't have to bundle up and deal with snow or anything like that. Not that I don't like a little snow here and there, but it's, it's so nice. And, of course, you know, during the pandemic, we did a lot of shows actually where Royal Rumble will be, will be held which, at the Tropicana Stadium. So it's cool to kind of go back there, revisit it, but this time with a stadium full of people. So we expect the show to be sold out. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be a completely different vibe after the pandemic. I remember how yeah. crazy those times were. Natty, I want to start with you really quick. Women's division, dare I say, it is hotter now than it has ever been. A, a lot of free agents coming over to WWE. A lot of people, um, you know, you know, coming back to the company. You are the locker room leader. I believe I saw a tweet the other day. It has been 17 years that you've been with the company. Talk about the locker room and, and how everything is with the women's division right now. I mean, it's so cool because, you know, myself and TJ, like, have such a, you know, we, we're so... We're so grateful and we're so lucky and we're so fortunate that we're a part of such a unique women's division, TJ working with the women um, behind the scenes. And of course me being this January actually for both of us has been like 17 years. Um, so it's been, it's been like a crazy ride, but having started in WWE in 2007 and to see where we're at in 2023, we just have so many, we have such an incredible division with so many women from every walk of life. And, and it only keeps getting better and better. And I think right now we've got the hottest, most fierce women's division that we've ever had in WWE. And I think 2024 is gonna be the biggest year for the women yet in WWE, hands down. So how has that been for you? Because you're you're wrestling, you're wrestling every week. But you're also locker room leader. You're, you're coaching uh, all the talent up. I'm going to talk about the dungeon here in, in, in a little bit. But, I mean, you're doing it all. How are you maintaining that balance uh, while still simultaneously being in the ring every single week competing on global television? I mean, it's because of him. He, he yeah, like, no, don't play, <laughs> don't play. <laughs> TJ is obviously an incredible support system for me, but I love what I do. And it's funny because, like, people will say to me like, oh, do you want to be a coach? Or do you want to be, it's like, I want to do everything. I want to wrestle. I want to compete. I want to help the girls behind the scenes in front of the, like in front of the camera. I want to work with every woman. I want to, there's so many different women I want to work with that I haven't had a chance to work with. There's things I want to accomplish. I love being able to work with women in our ring, of course, um, at the dungeon. And TJ is a huge part of that. And like, I'm just, I'm, there's just so much more that I want to do. And I'm, I'm, I feel so good. And I'm so grateful that I have the opportunity to um, grow the way that I do in WWE and just keep growing. I think that's the biggest thing for me going forward in the new year is just to keep growing. Um, and with that being said, like, it would be so cool to be a part of this year's Royal Rumble. I haven't, as of this filming, I haven't been picked to do it yet, but I, it would be my seventh Royal Rumble. So it, I would have been a part of every women's Royal Rumble. So let's get Guinness to get on top of that. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, every single one, my goodness. Hey, sticking within the theme of coach and TJ, I, I got to kick it over to you. Obviously, everyone knows your background in wrestling, multiple time champion. You were even voted the most underrated wrestler on the planet. Uh, one year, you had a career ending injury. My goodness, everything that happened with your neck, I'd say you, you should have died from that accident, but here you are finding a second life, reinventing yourself, not just within the ring, but, but as a coach and just absolutely dominating with that. I mean, a lot of times producers, as we call them in WWE, they kind of stay behind the scenes, but every time you check Twitter after a, uh, after a big wrestling pay-per-view, everyone after a home run match, it's a note. Hey, that was a TJ Wilson. Match. Uh, I mean, how does that, that that's, feel? That's on the girls. Through? Uh, I, I mean, in getting that recognition and just that acceptance from not only, you know, the fellow wrestlers, but but the top dogs in charge. Yeah, I mean, it, it's been an incredible, incredible journey with that. It didn't, there wasn't a path laid out. I didn't, you know, when I had, yeah, you, you referenced my, my neck injury, when I had the career-ending injury, when you do something for 20 years straight and all of a sudden you can't do it anymore like that, you have to, you have to pivot. 
uh, you know that that's life but it takes them it takes a minute to figure out what is that actual path and how do i get to what do i even want to do and how do i get there it, it, was, it was a very tricky situation that somehow you know thanks to thanks to natty and i, I have a great support system at, at work and great um, circle of friends i was able to land on my feet and figure this thing out that i i like to do i've coached people before but when i coached before i could physically get in there and do everything with them i, I can't do that now so when i when I coach, I, it, I have to work a lot more on my on my verbal communication that, to help, you know, to make it so that they can understand exactly what I'm saying verbally rather than always being able to physically show them, which is a very different skill skill set completely. Would you say that your contributions to the business are greater now as a coach than it ever was as an in-ring talent? Because I remember when I was getting started at NXT and NXT was – really starting to become its own entity, its own third show. You were one of the people that was handpicked to come back to NXT and jumpstart the brand. You were on the first takeovers. Not only were you coaching the talent, but you were in the main event, bringing people up to your, to your level to escalate the brand as a whole. But now you're doing something completely different. Would you say being a coach is maybe even a bigger contribution? Man, and, and Natty knows I say this a lot, and I, and I have goosebumps when you were kind of laying that all out because it it is true. I do I do feel this is a bigger contribution than my in ring career. However, I needed all the I need all the experiences and all that time of my own in ring career to be able to to apply everything on this side of things. So I, I you know I don't have any kind of regret of anything in my in my uh, wrestling career by any means, but uh, I definitely feel a greater sense of of accomplishment and achievement on this side of things working with. Like I, I work almost exclusively with the women for the past few years, and to to see them, it's it's a big game of catch up. We, Natty and I were speaking earlier. This is the seventh. This is gonna be the seventh women's Royal Rumble. This is the thirty sixth men's Royal Rumble. We're playing a big game of catch up here, right? My my goodness. Well, speaking of the Royal Rumble, so you're saying, are you saying there's a chance or not a chance that maybe <laughs> TJ Wilson's music maybe hits at one of these rumbles? Because I will lose my mind if that happens. I, I would really appreciate you losing your mind. However, I probably would have lost my mind if you hear my music playing. I'm at <laughs> Royal Rumble, so. <laughs> I love it. Well, guys, we've talked a lot about all the gold you've won the records you won, your contributions to the biggest business. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say my personal favorite thing that, that you guys have done has got to be the dungeon, your, your wrestling school. Obviously, a lot of history, a lot of legacy there. But here's a school that is accepting pro wrestlers from all of the world's top major promotions. Also, some of the smaller independent promotions, all are welcome. You guys are coaching people up and just seeing the difference that it has made in certain people's game. Angelo Dawkins, who's there every week. B-Fab, I Man. saw Ricky Starks and Odyssey Jones mixing it up. And recently, Jade Cargill. I mean, this is a situation where the, the big dogs in wrestling are sending their best and brightest to come to you to train on their off days. People are driving hours, three hours each way, just to be able to mix it up with you guys for an hour or two. Talk a little bit about the, the dungeon, please. I'm just so lucky that like, you know, for us, where I started my career with TJ, we were the last students of the original dungeon, which my grandfather, Stu Hart, started in Canada, uh, in Calgary, Canada. So we were the last students of that dungeon. So in the original dungeon, you look at Davy Boy, Dynamite, my dad, Brett, Owen, um, the list goes on and on of like really, really talented um, superstars. And so for us to be able to keep that dungeon name alive and to keep that dungeon vibe alive, um, especially be because we work so closely with the women, but not just the men, but like, I think, I think being able to give back to the men and women of WWE and this is the thing is that we're not really a, we're not really a school it's more like a private uh it's a it's a private like a workshop it's like a yeah it's like and listen one day maybe maybe one day we'll, we'll it will be a school but at the moment it's like a private invite only workshop but it's really cool because yeah we do work with people from every walk of life we 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 love being able to help people and so i try not to discriminate and go only we can only have the women of wwe here like i feel like if you have passion for this and you're you know one of my favorite people to have come in is david finley um 
He's Fit Finley's son. He just won the championship in uh, New Japan. Uh, he's just incredible in what he brings to the table. Anybody that comes to our ring, they, they it just, I say to TJ, I said, we just, they have to be able to bring something to the table that inspires us. And then in return, TJ or myself, like we can, you know, pass on the things that we've learned in our journeys, which between the two of us has been, between the two of us and our wrestling careers has been almost 50 years of wrestling knowledge and growing up around it. So like, it's, it's just so cool. And it's our, I always say this to TJ, but it's our love letter to wrestling. The dungeon is our way of giving back to the industry that gave us so much. So yeah, I mean, you, and you, like you laid out, there's a lot of different people from different companies coming and they, <clears throat> the people that are there, they know that it's like a judgment free zone and any critique is going to be constructive criticism. It's not going to be anything to detract or take away from anything. And the environment and the just the vibe and the almost the iron sharpens iron type of thing, especially right. as you start to see Dawkins after you know he just starts keeps going, it keeps going. All of a sudden, he just keeps improving, and he and not only does he keep improving, he also brings this energy, and he wants to see everyone else improve too. He's a, Dawkins is a big big component of. The of the dungeon being uh, go as smooth and as successful as it's been. He's a big part of it. And he gets a lot out of it too, but he's a big part of it. But he brings an energy where like, even if you're not feeling it that day, if I'm not, if, if you know, I come in on a Wednesday, maybe tired from the road. Dawkins isn't tired because for some reason he's kind of like Mojo style where he doesn't get tired. So <laughs> he has that energy. So, it, you know, it just, you, you, you get addicted. You walk in the room, maybe kind of sluggish. And within minutes, everybody's energy's up and it's Dawkins a huge part of but the the whole like and and it's kind of a fun, almost a funny like uh a fight club like like Natty said it's not a it's not a school you can't sign up so you have to know somebody that's already there and they kind of vouch for you or <laughs> you or or you take you you know you take the leap and you, you keep DMing Natty and myself and asking and and we've had people and have people that have we where we didn't have room at times and now they're now they're there weekly right so it, it you know it don't give up is is really the the big thing never give up <laughs> even if you do get a no at first we have people that train with us weekly that did get a no at one point and it wasn't a no because they weren't good enough it's a no just because it's a limited space and we have limited yeah. time that's all and we have to usually kick dawkins out of the ring <laughs> dawkins Dawkins wants to work. Our practices are usually about three to four hours and it's nonstop. So Dawkins wants to wrestle on a Wednesday night for almost three hours straight. And I have to go, Dawkins, get out of the ring. I, man, I, honestly, I don't know if his like car ride there, like to the dungeon and home are like, I don't know if he's like completely quiet and saves every drop of energy. Cause the second he gets out of that car, the second he goes back in, it's a hundred percent energy. I, I don't know where he gets it from. But yeah, we just, you know, in, in, in wrapping it up, like I, I think that what I love being able to do is taking what I've learned in the original dungeon with my family and like before I even made it to WWE I wrestled in Japan I wrestled in England I had a you know kind of a hybrid style so to be able to pass that along to Jade Cargill to Liv Morgan to uh B-Fab, B -Fab, who B-Fab is incredible and I can't wait for her to get the chance to like shine but um Liv Morgan like yeah Shotzi's been down there Raquel Rodriguez I mean just so many so many talented women um that, that have come and, and gotten the chance to work with us. And, you know, we had Billy Starks in there the other day and it was just so cool because she's so young and she loves this and she's passionate. And it just, I love, like TJ said, iron sharpens iron. So that's, you know, that's the, the name of the game is I need to feel inspired. And in return, we want to inspire others. And it's just our way of giving back to the industry. And, and it's working because I've seen so many tweets where people have said, you know, my goodness, Angelo Dawkins has escalated his game in the past couple of years. And, it's not even wrestlers responding. It's fans that'll say, well, he's been yeah. over at the dungeon. That That's why uh, he, his game has gotten better. I want to ask you really quick before we wrap things up. I know you guys are incredibly busy. You guys mentioned Jade Cargo coming over from AEW to WWE. Obviously, two very different styles of wrestling. You guys have essentially been tasked with showing her the way, filling in the holes of her game, you know, uh, bringing her up to speed when the WWE, WWE way of light how how is everything going with jade i think like with with jade she you know she 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 said hey like i'd love to come and, and work with you and i was like oh my god i would love that and so when she she came to the dungeon it was just um like to me i just i absolutely love working with new women that come into wwe it makes me so excited 
And I love her enthusiasm. I love how excited she is about jumping into this. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, like it's just, and I know she's gone through a lot because she, you know, she just, her mom had just passed away recently. So it's like a very hard time for her in her life. But to be able to give somebody that diversion and to be able to say, hey, this is like, in the near two decades of being in WWE for both of us, like here, let me like, let's all work together. Like, I do believe that we all get stronger together. And I'm also excited about working with her in WWE. Um, I love like, you know, when I think about the people that have worked with in their very beginning careers, like yeah. I was Charlotte's like first rivalry, her first one of her first big rivalries. You know, I had that match with Charlotte at TakeOver in 2014. It's like one of my proudest moments in my career um, because sometimes you just need somebody to believe in you and so i really i believe in jade i think she's going to be awesome i think i just think that 2024 like the way that the women are being used right now and like the track that we're, we're about to be on for 2024 starting with the royal rumble um i just think that we're going to see a whole new era of women's wrestling that's going to blow everybody away with you two leading the charge uh just to make a football analogy here natty you're the tom brady <laughs> I'll Tyson, take it. you I'll are the Bill Belichick. The I'm Bill Belichick Tom Brady run. That's you two wrestling royalty on the show, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. This was so much fun right here on TMZ Sports. Mojo, thanks so much for having us, man. You're the man. Thank you, Mojo.